So I'm excited here today to share our update for thin film and what we're doing to energize innovation for wearable devices and connected sensors. So our focus is to deliver superior energy density and longer life uh, for premium micro batteries that we expect to deliver with superior performance over lithium ion. That includes twice the energy density in a given volume, very helpful in small form factor applications, three times the life cycle so that the recharging frequency can, can be over many, many years, and is fundamentally safer than lithium ion. And how we're doing that is we're leveraging our proprietary IP using our unique technology platform that we've been developing these last years for building electronics on stainless steel. We have validated how to do that on our roll to roll process. We've innovated and developed a unique uh, multi-cell battery stacking innovation. And we'll be able to deliver all of this within our company owned fully equipped manufacturing facility that has been ISO 9001 certified. We're addressing unique market requirements, those that need form factor and energy density for the wearables applications, as well as long lifetime and reliability for the hearables and connected sensors market. The micro battery market is where we are focused. It's an established and existing market and it's growing rapidly. And it's well aligned to our existing factory capability and our scale and our ability to serve the volumes that are necessary in these markets. In total, these markets are a 1 billion unit market opportunity for these category of batteries. And initially we'll focus on the markets on the left, the hearable segment, hearing aids, wireless headphones, that represent about 350 million units per year, as well as the medical wearable market of 150 million units, which include continuous glucose monitoring, and temperature monitoring and other forms of health and medical monitoring. We expect those segments to represent premium pricing. Uh, our focus will be direct to OEMs. Uh, their applications are very form factor specific and will benefit from our ability to deliver customization of the size and shape of the battery when today they're limited to fixed format button cells, coin cells that are round uh, and thick disks of, of lithium ion. And over time, we'll expect expand into additional segments, including the sports and fitness wearable market, connected sensors market, which includes many, many customers that are looking for high energy density, long lifetime applications. And we expect to leverage partnerships in this space uh, and we expect to increasingly that to move to standard products uh, as it will be addressing a broad customer base uh, in these segments. So what is ThinFilm bringing that's unique uh, to this application set of applications and to this marketplace? And, and we have a very novel architecture that we believe is going to transform how micro batteries are delivered to the market. First, we're starting with an established analyst solid state chemistry. It's been, it was invented in the 1990s. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a research project, it's an established technology and has been demonstrated to have long life, to have safe operation. And middle of this past year, within months of us announcing our new strategy, uh, we were able to demonstrate uh, our entitlement energy within our equipment set. Second, we're bringing our proven ultra thin steel substrates. Uh, and we expect that to be a fundamental ability to deliver very high volumetric energy density because we'll be moving the thickness of the steel down to very, very thin 10 microns thickness. This is a significant advantage over other substrates that are used in the solid state battery market with their ceramics or silicon, uh, which are not able to be thinned to such thin thicknesses uh, and consume a larger volume within the battery. We've reliably shipped millions of units of electronic article surveillance devices uh, with very high quality and therefore we have very clear um, manufacturing capability using our stainless steel. 
Third, we're bringing our innovative cell stacking and packaging technology, which will allow us to, uh, to maximize uh, the final product format into very thin form factors, continuing to deliver high volumetric energy density. This will further leverage the steel hermeticity that is required when building lithium batteries. And it enables us to bring customization uh, to the micro battery market. And finally, our ability to scale is based on our established installed scale up roll to roll factory, which is quite unique in the micro battery market. The ability to be able to deliver millions of units per year, uh, and not just thousands of units per year. We'll begin by developing the technology in our sheet line, uh, and then we'll be transferring that technology as we'll talk about uh, during this year to our cost-effective high volume roll-to-roll -roll line. So this is when put all together, the chemistry, the steel, the packaging and the factory, our ability to deliver the superior performance micro batteries at scale. So we recently announced some of some achievements, uh, which include our first product design that we've taped out based on the customer feedback we've heard these past months. And we're very excited by this. This product will be the, the first product that will be the a driver for building out our product platform. Second, we've announced that we've signed evaluation agreements uh, in the marketplace, uh, and we're very excited to continue to have uh, meaningful and deep engagements with many customers. Third, we have a clear roadmap defined baseline process to deliver process enhancements, which will enable increased energy density up to 600 watt hours per liter. All of that combined will then build out the product platform that we'll use to support a wide variety of battery products that can include customer product customization as part of that. And then finally, we brought on board two battery experts here recently, these last two months. Uh, one, Louis Gulato, who is a roll-to-roll -roll factory battery uh, experience executive having built multiple battery uh, factories these past years as well as his background in semiconductor processing and manufacturing, which is also very helpful as the thin film technology relies on both roll to roll and semiconductor light process technology. Second is Tim Powers, who comes to us from Z Power and he led their customer engagements, their commercial engagements and supporting them technically uh, with the micro batteries that Z Power was manufacturing uh, these past years and delivered successful business for a number of years su supporting uh, the hearables and wearable marketplaces. And so we're very excited that Tim has also joined. So we've talked, as I mentioned, to many customers <clears throat> these past months and, and the feedback is consistent. Uh, the OEMs are excited and they're looking for the technical advancements of the battery technology we are offering. They're looking for higher energy densities. They're looking for the ability to have longer lifetimes. Uh, they look for, to have faster charge uh, charging. Uh, and they have, particular in these wearable and hearable markets, uh, form factor flexibility is a really interesting and important dynamic for them as they design their next generation products. And finally, safety. Uh, solid state lithium is a safe chemistry. It's not subject to heating up or fire or leaking its uh, liquid electrolyte, which is really important for on-body uh, human applications. So in the hearable sp space, we've heard very clearly that the lifetime of the hearing aids uh, is very important. The OEMs are looking for three to four years of full nightly charges. And today that's just not achievable with lithium ion, which are limited to three to 400 cycles of lifetime. Solid state has been established to deliver over 1000 cycles. And so that lifetime benefit uh, is very, uh, very important to these customers. In the wearable space, a form factor and the ability to pack more and more energy into smaller and smaller form factors is also very important <clears throat> to enable different shape options to match the, their wearable applications uh, is also an area that they're looking to work with us on. 
And finally, in the connected sensor space, uh, the idea of pairing our battery with energy harvesting wireless charging technologies to allow for continuous charging of the battery with slow trickle charges uh, is uniquely uh, appropriate for a solid state battery. Uh, and so we're very excited about the ability to deliver uh, full solutions into the marketplace with partners uh, to serve the connected sensor applications uh, in, the, in the marketplace. A little more depth on the hearing aid application. Uh, this is a market characterized by very high premium prices. Uh, rechargeability has historically not been commonly used in these hearing aids, but it is now being widely adopted and it's accelerating in its application, which is uh, very well aligned in timing with ThinFilm's uh, offerings to accelerate the use of rechargeable batteries in hearing aids. And they're also looking for more energy. They're looking to add functionality to their hearing aids, such as Bluetooth or streaming audio. Uh, the big five, uh, we've engaged all of them, as you see listed there, uh, as well as a number of innovative startups. And, and their feedback is consistent that they're needing these higher energy, longer life batteries for their form factor constrained applications. On the bottom, you can see the comparison of the volumetric energy density between the leading lithium ion competitors, which the batteries are round button cells, uh, the different sizes typically used in hearing aids are somewhere in the 300 to 350 watt hours per liter. And, and we expect the battery to, we will deliver at the end of this year to be in the big, between 500 and 600 watt hours per liter. You'll also notice that our battery is square. Uh, our battery has the terminals on the ends, not on the top and the bottom. And both of these, the form factor shape, as well as how to implement this, is, is a classical SMT surface mount technology format, uh, which is, enables ease of application into their electronic system. Uh, as compared to coin cell batteries. And so this is also a great form factor for ease of use and implementation as well as its compact size. So a little more detail on this product. So this first one has been designed, uh, but it is to drive a fundamental platform of the ability to design and build multiple batteries uh, with these design roles uh, with this uh, technology and manufacturing capability we've, we've put in place. So we've completed this baseline process. We've completed this initial design based on design rules uh, that we've established. And we've taped out this initial product for fabrication. The technology development we're now focused on includes thinning the steel, uh, as I mentioned, down to as thin as 10 microns to doing high resolution patterning. This is something we did before with our EAS and NFC technology, but now applying that patterning technology to batteries, as well as implementing our next generation innovative packaging to deliver uh, the product that you see on the right. And so you see, we gave a little glimpse into the battery on the right, uh, cut out on, on the side of the battery there. Uh, and you can see in the green, uh, the lithium where, where the battery is contained and, the, and then it's stacked uh, layers of the cells that will be built on our roll to roll line. So it allows us to create uh, different sizes uh, and different shapes, um, as I said, based on the target market and a given customer's requirements. So this is our plan for 2021. We'll continue to engage our customers now that we've defined this product platform, we'll deepen our engagement and we expect to be able to announce additional signed agreements in the coming months. We've defined this platform and taped out our first product and now we'll be implementing these volumetric energy density improvements on our sheet line or development line in parallel with developing this first product. At some point, sometime in the middle of the year, we expect to introduce some of these customer specific customizations into the development as well. And our key milestone for this platform development is to begin sampling in Q3 of this calendar year. 
In parallel, we have begun to bring up our existing roll-to-roll -roll manufacturing capability. So we're now planning and integrating. We'll bring up the tools uh, by the end of this quarter uh, and begin the process transfer <clears> of <throat> the work being done on the sheet line. And we are targeting having that ready and qualified by the end of the calendar year to be positioned for volume ramp up during the fourth quarter of this year. So our focus this year, where we'll be investing our time, our money <clears throat> is on building products. These ultra thin premium long lasting batteries we will be focusing on the rechargeable hearable market with this first product, but we'll also be bringing additional designs for other customers and other markets. Uh, we intend to continue to focus on doubling the energy density of lithium ion and tripling the cycling life of lithium ion uh, while inherently bringing safe batteries. We'll be ramping our roll to roll line uh, and ultimately the factory is capable of tens of millions of batteries with milliamp hour ca battery capacity per year uh, with efficiency and consistency and reliability. Uh, and we'll be focusing our team uh, step by step to grow uh, with the transition that that factory ramp will require. And in parallel, continuing to execute our targeted go to market strategy, prioritizing hearables, the medical wearable space, and where we find applications that are fact, form factor constrained. We see the market is big, it's existing and it's growing in the area of rechargeability. So we're very excited about the possibility of these markets and our technology. So I've shown a slide like this in our previous updates uh, this past year. Uh, this has been updated now uh, to give the scorecard on the left of our 2020 milestones, as well as our roadmap for 2021 and 2022. And in 2020, we were very successful in delivering on our battery IP filings and our first samples on thin film equipment that we announced early in the year. Uh, we've now signed evaluation agreements uh, and now defined our product platform and achieved our first product tape out. And so we've been on track. Uh, we've accomplished the key things we intended to during 2020. And now through the course of this year, we'll be working on the VED enhancements, as I spoke about, as well as in broadening and deepening our customer engagements. And the two key milestones that we're focused on is our initial product ready, uh, as well as our first product revenue uh, at the end of this calendar year. And those two milestones will then launch the activities into 2022 as it's written there on the slide, which includes initial qualification by the OEMs of our batteries uh, into their product and applications, the design of our high volumetric energy batteries into their uh, specific end consumer designs, release into the fact into their uh, consumer channels, and then ramp production based on their demand. And in parallel, we'll continue to do technology enhancements, uh, VED enhancements uh, to continue to progress on our roadmap. But the customer engagement will then lead to their ramp to a point that we would expect and target to reach cash flow break even at the end of 2022, which we would expect to be somewhere at 3 million units or above uh, that we can reach uh, positive cash flow. So in summary, uh, we're excited, I'm excited about the opportunity. It's a billion unit end market to serve the micro battery segment. It's three to four billion US dollar size. And we expect pricing in the initial target markets to be between three and 10 US dollars. And we're gonna deliver all of that with the differentiation of our energy density, our charging cycles, the safety and reliability of our batteries and its customization and stickiness potential. And so we expect with our steel capability, with our stacking capability and our scale that over time, uh, when our factory is full, we'll have a very defendable technical differentiation 
that with a full factory, we had the potential to deliver over 100 million US per year in EBITDA. So very profitable, uh, very um, well fit uh, business model uh, with our existing factory. So that concludes my presentation. Uh, and so we can open it up for questions. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Um, <clears throat> we have received um, some questions from the audience here. So I just uh, uh, asked the first question, and that's about the hearing aid companies. Um, when you first when you first were, were in contact with the hearing aid companies, sort of what how did that sort of first conversation go with regards to what you were telling them about your your technology? Oh, good question. So uh, we we reached out to them. Um, we uh, had established connections with the key people at all, each of the hearing aid companies. We've now had uh, multiple conversations with each of the top leading uh, companies uh, in the world, uh, and and their their feedback is that they're very, very much looking for the solution capabilities that we are offering. They uh, want to deliver higher energy density within a very confined space inside of whether it's over the air applications, in the air, even in the canal, which is even smaller confined space. Uh, they want to deliver higher functionality such as Bluetooth uh, and streaming audio, which requires more energy. They want consumers to be able to take their hearing aids out each night and charge them. And they want them to last three to four years. And, and their warranty cost is directly impacted by premature uh, um, lifetime of the battery. These batteries are increasingly not replaceable. And so it's a very expensive proposition to replace these batteries. And so the, the, the feedback is uh, very positive. Uh, they're anxious to see uh, the final products that we're uh, talking about to delivering to them. Uh, and I expect that we will get more and more feedback uh, as the months go forward. So uh, the feedback has been very positive and very supportive uh, and they look forward to continuing to work with us. So, um, with regards to your break even, uh levels which you discussed in the presentation um do you need sort of uh four or five hearing aid companies as customers to to reach that break even level or is that sort of uh, uh is two or three enough for for your your operation uh, yeah, it depends on their ramp. Uh, it depends on their ramp. The market, the market size is is plenty big that a single customer could satisfy that. Uh, obviously, our focus is to have more than one, uh, and so uh, I would expect initially it would not be all five on that. So it'll be somewhere somewhere in the middle there. But I. I also would just also comment that uh, the volume that we're looking to have is not limited to hearing aids. Uh, it's uh, our first uh, product we've defined because we it's it's the most clear uh, dimensionality that we can define today. Uh, some of these other applications have much more freedom to change it, and so. As we take our product platform into the market now that we've announced it, I would expect engagements on other segments beyond the hearable segment and um, and so we'll see we'll see volume from other OEMs beyond hearing aid companies so it's it's a combination of both okay and and it uh, another question here uh, that uh, as you said in the presentation you will get you hope to get your first order or ship your first order in Q421 mm -hmm. um, what what is sort of expected size of such an order, which will sort of be the first in the role of plan into 2022? Is that sort of something you could indicate or whatever? Well, what I would expect is it's sufficient quantity for the OEMs to begin their qualification efforts. So this is not production volumes. This is batteries they'll need as they have seen the samples and are satisfied that they want to qualify us as a supplier. 
Uh, the initial qualification, it depends on the OEM, how many they need, but it's it's not a small number, but it's not production volumes. It's uh, sufficient to go through their qualification testing. And so that'll be a demonstration that they're buying batteries of sufficient quantity to do that activity. Is there, uh, if you get, or when you get more and more customers, do you need to make any adjustments to the manufacturing environment or could you use sort of is it is it easy to go from one customer to mm-hmm. the other customer in your roll to roll manufacturing process uh yeah it's a great question so we do not need to change the factory process uh, that is the idea of the product platform uh, we can build many different products using the same process same equipment same technology uh, and what we're changing is the patterning and dimensionality for the given uh, application and customer, what size they need, the, the width and the, and the depth, uh, but as well, uh, how many layers of cells we need to stack uh, based on the amount of capacity that they need. But the basic process is not changing. It's, it's just uh, the matter of the size of the the cell that we build on the roll to roll line and then how many cells do we stack to deliver the final battery uh, and so it's it's we're very striving towards a standardized process flow that's very scalable um, but also flexible to build these different uh, shapes and sizes and 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 different ranges of energy capacity um, do you need to make any sort of upgrades to the roll to roll I mean sort of additional equipment to start a process uh, later this year or is it sort of just people mm. yeah so the, so we have all of the major tools we have uh, the major tools for the roll to roll line we need to do some minor modifications we were not using lithium for example in our previous NFC strategy uh, and so we need to convert uh, the, some of the, the um, tools to handle the different materials. So it's some modifications, but nothing, nothing significant. Uh, we'll need to make some investment, some, some limited investment in the back end. We were not doing uh, batteries before, so we need to have battery testers. We've bought a number of them already. Um, and uh, the packaging is unique, so that requires some modest capital. But that is not major retrofit. Uh, it's uh, all f- uh, quite manageable, both financially and uh, operationally. And uh, with regards to, to, to people in the production facility, uh, how many more do you need to hire to get this sort of production moving forward when you are close to the uh, sort of break even levels. Ah, okay. Yeah, so so today we're about 25 uh, people. Uh, we we are forecasting that we should be about 35 by the end of this year. Um, and then when the factory is getting full, uh, which would be beyond break even, uh, we would expect to be just about 50 maybe a little bit more than 50, 55, uh, something like that, when we're getting to a fairly busy factory. Most of those hires will be then the operational type people, the the equipment management people and the operators um, for the different tools, uh, and less uh, about engineering hires and management hires. But so we'll be going from 25 to 35 into this year, and then as demand increases up to 50, 55, and then I would expect we were at full capacity. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, and then um, one of your new hires uh, came from um, another battery company. Mm. Um, is there any synergies from his knowledge of the market which you can use, for example, customers or mm. partners or uh, other things that you could sort of dig into to get quicker to the market? Yes, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, so the company was uh, Z Power. They were shipping micro batteries into the hearing aid market. 
Uh, they've since um, dis discontinued operations, um, but they um, demonstrated that rechargeable batteries is a very interesting and growing market in that space. So uh, Tim brings um, a lot of connections and technical knowledge of what is required uh, to serve that market as well as the wearables market. Um, we expect to broaden uh, more applications, uh, but nonetheless, um, yes, it's a very helpful uh, uh, Tim will be very helpful for us to pursue all of that strategy. And <clears throat> with your, um, where where you're based, you're based in Silicon Valley, um, in an area where there are quite a few, I would say, startups, but companies focusing on battery technology more in general. I guess it's more on the EC level, uh, uh, on, the, on the EC side. Is there any sort of synergy to be based in that sort of melting pot within the battery technology uh, right now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we uh, it's, it's the power of Silicon Valley to, to the ecosystem of so many companies close by and, and, the, and the knowledge and insights uh, that, um, that people can gain from that. Uh, we've been able to hire key people uh, this past year, key engineering people. Uh, as a result, with specific battery knowledge, uh, we've been able to uh, gain knowledge in working with uh, local partners. When we announced a year ago a strategy, we talked about working with a partner. That company was uh, only uh, two kilometers away uh, from our office in San Jose. Uh, so it was very convenient uh, to do that. Uh, we have uh, other material companies we work with that have offices there. Uh, and so it's a very uh, convenient ecosystem uh, to build a battery business for sure. And of course, we have got quite a few questions about um, uh, we can't dig into that, uh, all of those questions right now, because it's uh, about the technologies that's out there. There's a lot of articles about EC uh, initiatives and so on. But is there sort of anything, I'll ask you in more in general terms, Kevin, is there something that you are digging into uh, and what you are focusing at, which could have an um, uh, effect as an input to other manufacturers in the market. That means, is there anything that you are doing which some other player is going to pick up and buy some sort of a basis technology for you? Or are you sort of focusing on your area alone? Mm. Uh, it's a little bit of both. Uh, we are focused on micro batteries, and and I think that is unique in the um, in the market today. There are other micro battery players. Uh, lithium ion is is the current rechargeable delivery. There's companies that are well established there, but for uh, solid state, uh, there's very limited uh, alternatives for micro batteries. Um, serving um, solid state lithium batteries. Uh, none of them today have announced a battery in the milliamp hour capacity space, which is required for the applications we are targeting. Uh, and so that is the, re the reason for that is two. One is uh, we have our stainless steel and our stainless steel can become very, very thin and it allows us to do higher capacity and higher energy density batteries. We also have a factory with high roll-to-roll -roll, um, capacity of, of manufacturing scale. Uh, and that does not exist with today, other solid state lithium battery companies doing micro batteries. So we're unique. Uh, we're unique in the, uh, the factory capability, the technology capability of our stainless steel, uh, and how we attend to assemble and put together these batteries. Um, to serve millions and millions of units in a milliamp hour class um, set of markets. But I know a lot, a lot of technology development is going into the EV space, the grid storage space, which uh, you know has similar metrics, uh, has similar goals to increase energy density, extend life cycles, become more reliable and become safer uh, than today's lithium ion technologies. 
those technologies, uh, though, are ultimately focused on a different metric than we are. They're focused on weight. Uh, they're focused on an energy density per unit of weight, which is gravimetric energy density, uh, watt hours per kilogram. We are focused on energy density in volume. And, and so they're, they're manufacturing techniques, the manufacturing approach are quite different, actually, uh, how those technologies are, are manufactured. Um, yes, they use roll to roll. Yes, we use roll to roll. Uh, yes, they use different composites of lithium. We use different composites of lithium. Um, but how all of that is done, how all of that is delivered uh, is, is um, ultimately quite different. Um, uh, and so that that is the similarities and that is also the differences. Uh, and so there'll be learning across the, uh, across the time, um, but it, it, at some point um, there, there's, they're really kind of somewhat different as well. So that it's a bit of a mixed answer. Okay, and then um, um, the second last question here. Um, clearly, you have stated that you are so you have very good sort of uh, grip so far on the hearing aid market. So, assuming that sort of you are looking at another market mm -hmm. outside the hearing aid, which you are actually describing in the presentation, mm -hmm. what is your sort of sweet spot in addition to the hearing aid market for uh, growing into? Yeah, it's it's the wearable, it's the on-body wearable segment, which uh, there's a number of applications that we see that are very interested in our technology. Um, the engagements will start at the same time as hearables. We expect though, because many of them are medical in nature, even though they're on body medical, uh, they tend to have a longer qualification and certification process than it, than, um, than hearing aids. And so it, we will engage a variety of those. Um, it's a little premature to talk about them too specifically, um, but but we, um, we've engaged with several of those applications and there's a lot of interest for wearables uh, these days to do a variety of different sensing. Uh, as health and particularly in the era of uh, COVID-19 and the, the remote monitoring and the, and the, the um, desire for on-body sensing of, of your body's health in different dimensions, I think that that application is going to continue to grow, is going to continue to look for form factor appropriate energy and uh, we think we're going to be part of that solution so yes it's going to be the wearable segment and then the last question which is sort of uh, related to the warrants in the company how mm -hmm. many warrants uh, are outstanding and what's the exercise price yeah so as of the end of our last quarterly report uh, we are warrant a, well, the warrant A's have now been concluded at the end of December, so they're they're finished. Warrant B's, uh, we have, as of the end of our Q3 report, 287 million sh shares not yet exercised, uh, and that exercise price is 0.15 NOC. And then we have our warrant C's, uh, which uh, are not able to be exercised until after March 31st and their exercise price are 0.25 NOC, uh, and there's 400 million available shares, uh, available warrants, I should say, to be exercised to become shares. Okay, thanks, Kevin. That was uh, the last question uh, for me. So uh, it's over to you for some uh, concluding remarks. Well, I, again, thank you for your time and watching this and interest in uh, ThinFilm. We're very excited about our new strategy of building innovative micro batteries for the wearables and sensing marketplaces. The opportunity is very large. Uh, it's uh, really an ability for us to focus on those applications where we can bring the highest value. Uh, and our factory is well positioned to serve this market our technology uh, progress this past year 
in building the modules necessary to put together a battery is on track. And now we're excited as we get into 2021 to put it all together uh, to build our first product and this product platform to build other products uh, on our factory, on our technology and deliver differentiated batteries um, for the micro battery market, for the wearable and connected sensor segments of, of, of this business. So thank you for your interest and, and interest and I'll look forward to giving another update in the coming months. Uh, and so thank you so much.